now that we've talked about the basic ways that we can go in and forecast, let's go in now and, and let's look at the data that we think may have some sort of a seasonality to it. So checking seasonality, first thing we want to do is just like any other um, forecasting. Let's take the data, let's plot it. Okay, so I'm going to insert, insert just a regular line uh, in here. And so we kind of see that, you know, that it looks like this data is kind of possibly trending left to right, but then there may be some sort of other trend that's going on too. Maybe a, maybe a little bump and then a rise, and then a bump and a rise, and a bump and a rise. Um, we have 36 months worth of data here, three years worth of data, so let's go in here and, um, and let's, let's see what's happening. Let's, first of all, let's see if we can add a trend line to this. Uh, get our trend line in. Let's uh, set our equation on the chart. Display the R squared values. Remove this. Bring this up. So from uh, what we've discussed before, an R squared value above a 0.5 is really a pretty good model. So this alone looks like a fairly reasonable model. But let's see what happens if, if we can find some sort of seasonality. So to find the seasonality, what we want to do is let's find our hypothesized cycle. Uh, in this case, let's, let's think that maybe this is sales that we're looking at that's being done on a, uh, an annual basis and something's going on. So what I've done going from sheet one to sheet two just to show you what's going on is sheet one is 36 months worth of continuous data starting in June going through May uh, three years later. I want to take and I just want to put all of my Junes together. So this 21, this 32, this 48. So I want to get all my Junes together to see what's going on. So you can see I've taken all of the next year, all of this data I took and I moved it down. And then the next data I took and moved it down. So what I have is I have all of my data stacked. Um, let's check real quick. Let's. Let's, now that we've gotten all of our Junes together, um, Julys and whatever else, now let's insert another line chart. Let's see if, see if there's something going on. You know what, and it looks like when we put it in here that there does appear to be a, a bit of a loop here. Um, another big seasonal where we go up in December and then drop January, down in January. So it, you know, it kind of does. It looks like it looks to me like there may be some sort of seasonality there that perhaps we can tease out. So I'm going to get rid of this. What we want to do with this now is we want to, after we've broken it down into these hypothesized cycles of 12 months, I want to calculate my seasonality constants. The way I do that is I'm going to go in and I'm going to find out what the average is for all of my June. I'm going to do that for each and every one of my months. And then I want to get what is my overall average. Overall monthly average, I'm taking the average of all of my months, put that in there. Now then, I have June is about 33.6. My average of all averages is about 40. Let's take and get a seasonality constant by taking June's data and dividing it by this number. And what I'm going to do to make sure I lock in my M column, I'm just going to put a dollar sign in front of it to lock that in. Okay, so what this says is that on average, June is only about 83% of what my average sales are. All right, now that I have locked in this M6, you can see that I can right click and drag for each one of my months and what it's done is it's taking 37 dividing it by the, my average it's taking 35.67 dividing it by average and so what we've done is we've taken and we've created these seasonality constants looking at the seasonality constants December has the highest it's about 29 percent larger than average uh, May is about 21% larger. Oh, I didn't see this. April is about 34% larger than the average on other things. 
So now I have my seasonality constants and I put them in the wrong column. So, sorry about that. Let me bring those down so you can see where they are. Okay. So I have seasonality constants. Move that one step forward. Let's take these seasonality constants and let's deseasonalize my data. Okay. You probably have seen or you've heard things where it says uh, deseasonalized data uh, is this or that or whatever else. What they've done in deseasonalizing is they have created a seasonality constant for each time period, and then they go back to their data, their original raw data, and then they divide that by the seasonality constant to come up with a new, uh, uh, with a deseasonalized data. So, what we're going to do is we are going to go in in my seasonalized, deseasonalized data, I'm going to take the original data and I'm going to divide it by the seasonality constant. I'm going to take the original data, divide it by the, deseasonal, uh, by the seasonality constant, and I do that for each and every one of my data uh, fields. So you can see everything down here, this is deseasonalized. Now, if I can put all my data back together again in one big long string, I can go in and see if we've, if we've done anything uh, uh, to improve our model. So, what I'm going to do, I'm taking all of my deseasonalized data, I'm putting it back into one big long string, so you can see the June 18 through May 18 is here. June of 19 through May of 2020, I've just taken these and I've pulled these up here. And then same thing here, June of 20 through May of 2021, I've taken those, I have pulled those up here. So now I have one big long string once again of deseasonalized data. Our next job is to see, once we've done this, did we improve our model any? So let's go, let's go back in, let's draw in a line. Okay, so this is what it looks like. It looks like we've moved some of the bumps and humps out of it. Um, let's add a trend line and let's put in uh, the equation on the chart and the R squared on the chart. Okay, so our new model here says that um, y is equal to 0.0291 times x minus 1233 and my R squared value now is uh, up to 86 percent. What was it before? Before it was only 68%. So we've gone from a 68% up to an 86%. So this model of deseasonalizing really did give us something here that's a, uh, it's a better model. It's a better understanding of it. So now that we see this, we have a trend that's associated with it. Let's take this trend and go in and come up with our new forecasts. Okay, again, here's our model. We just need to come up with new forecasts. All right, one quick trick on, I shouldn't call it a trick in this case, one thing that Excel does. Let me take, I'm gonna copy this, I'm gonna paste it in down below. Excel, even though this looks like a date, um, Excel really is treating this as a number. Uh, deep down inside, Excel says whenever it was going through and it was looking at um, time, this June of, of 2018, it really has gone back and it's converted it to a number based on January 1st of, of uh, 1900. You can see that this number, if you'll take and copy and paste this in, reach up here in your home tab and go to number. And when you go to number, you can see that this is the 43,252nd day that has occurred since January uh, 1st of 1900. I just backed off so we don't have any decimal points. I'm going to grab this and pull this forward all the way to the end. Oh, and it did not like that one bit. Let's do this. It wants it did not like the formatting, so I'm going to take 
I'm going to copy all of my months. Paste them in here. Let's convert it to a number. Decrease my zeros. And you can see that in June, it was 43,252 days. July, it assumed July 1st, and so it increased it 30 days, and then increased to August by 31 days. So this really is the number of days that's going on. So our, from our model, um, we're really going up about 0 0.0291 um, units per day as we march through this. So to come up with our new forecast, our new forecast equals 0 0.0291 times this day minus 1232, oops, sorry, 1233.2 And so with our deseasonalized data, we expect our forecast in June to be 57.33. Um, July is going to be 58.20. Um, and August 59.10. However, don't forget that these are deseasonalized data. And so what we need to be able to do is we need to get our seasonality constants because to get the real forecast for June, July, and August, we now have to re-seasonalize the data. I'm going to go over here, June, July, and August. These are my seasonality constants. I'm going to bring these over. So the real seasonalized forecast is my deseasonalized forecast times the seasonality constant. Do that for July and August. And so you can see here that our new forecasts using a trend, using seasonality constants, um, are those new numbers. I know it seems like a lot of steps there. Uh, learning how to get there on uh, learning out how to deseasonalize data, reseasonalize data, really is going to help you a, a lot when you're out there working with data that uh, appears to have trends in it um, and uh, uh, let you do all sorts of cool stuff. All right? Good luck.